For those who watched the overview video of my 350Z race car, you know that I have these vents in my hood to try and not only improve cooling, but also to reduce lift and drag. The idea is the air that comes into the front of a car and goes through the radiator has to go somewhere. In a normal car with a completely enclosed hood, that air is going to get trapped in the engine bay or exit out from underneath the car. That's gonna cause lift, any air that gets trapped in there is gonna cause drag, and it's going to reduce your cooling because the only way that cooling works is if you continuously have air flowing through the radiator. If the air gets backed up inside your engine bay, eventually it's gonna cause high pressure inside your engine bay, and it's going to limit the amount of air that goes across the radiator as you continue forward. If that air does not escape, it will back up like filling a cup with water. You can only put so much air in that area. For this reason, all performance cars and race cars have hood ventings to get that air out of the engine bay and keep the air moving. As you get up to more and more advanced cars, they also have ducts to make sure that air goes exactly where you want. So even though I have this huge hood vent, both in the front and in the back of the hood, the air is still going to go through the radiator and smack into the front of the engine and get turbulent and bend around inside the engine bay. Eventually, as my speed gets up, the low pressure areas around those vents are going to pull some of that air out, but it's not going to be as good as if there was a duct there. So that's what we're going to be doing today, is I'm going to show you the duct I made for my hood. I have always wanted one of these. I always look at all of the cars at Petit Le Mans and things like that. It was so much envy of the amazing carbon fiber hood ducts that they're able to have. So I'm super excited to finally have this and to get it done before we go to Road Atlanta next month. Here is what's hiding under that hood vent. You can see the radiator right here up front and in my 14 inch fan just for the time I'm sitting in the paddock or if I'm in traffic with the car on the way to the track. And you can see there's not a whole lot of room here in between the radiator and the front of the engine. So all that air is going to come straight in, hit the front of the engine, and then it has to find its way from here up out of that hood. Now, like I said, as the car gets moving and some of that airflow starts to happen over the top of the hood, it's going to cause some low pressure areas where those fins stick up into the airflow and that will allow the air to make its way back out of the hood. But that will never be as efficient as it could be if I had a duct. Now ideally in something like a GT car, the engine is going to be moved back considerably and you can also have the radiator at an angle. So instead of it being straight up and down, it might be at something like a 45 degree angle. And that's definitely something I plan to do in the future, but for this small area is all I've got to work with. I also have the fact that I can't do the full width of the radiator, because number one, my hood vent is not that wide. And while I could add more venting, there's just so much stuff here. I've got my swirl pot here, the air intake is here, you got the lower radiator hose. You have a lot of different stuff that is in the way that it's just not conducive for me to make a wider duct. Conveniently, the open area in the middle I have to work with is also the same width as the hood vent, so that'll work out nicely. Originally, I planned to make this out of fiberglass or carbon fiber because I've still got some resin left over from when I made the intake and all of that. However, I've changed my mind on that a little bit because number one, I don't really like working with composites. It's a lot of work, it's messy, it's complicated, it takes a lot of time, and I don't really enjoy it. I just like the fact that it's light and it's strong, so I use it when I have to. And then I thought maybe I could make it out of aluminum, but I really don't want to deal with drilling all the holes and rivets, and I can't weld. And if it ends up being too thin, it's going to shake and rattle and make a bunch of noise. And if it's too thick, it's going to be difficult to work with, and it's going to be a little bit heavier. So the material we're actually going to use to make the duct is going to surprise some of you guys, but I promise it's actually going to work extremely well, and I'm really excited about it. But first, cardboard. If you guys aren't using it already, cardboard is an amazing thing to use when working in your car, especially the cereal box type material of a really thin cardboard that's super easy to cut. It works great for things like this. So we already have our rough draft put together. I've put it in a couple times already, as you can probably tell, because I've got the cutouts here for the low radiator hose and the swirl pot. So it's already perfected for the most part. I just want to put it in one last time to see how it's doing. But like I said, just a bunch of cardboard and masking tape. It works really well to give you a rough idea of what you need. And then you can cut all this masking tape, lay it all flat, and you can use it as a stencil. So this is more than enough for you to get a rough idea of how it's going to work. Like I said, I've already put it in and take it out multiple times just to make sure I get all of this right, give me enough room for the swirl pot. I don't want to be rubbing on these hoses. I want to have enough room for the lower radiator hose. And then for my radiator neck, I want to make sure everything has enough room and there's not going to be a bunch of rubbing or anything like that 
that going on. I had to make sure that everything was wide enough that the fan can sit in here because that is where it is going to live. As you can see, it only takes up the middle 50% of the radiator, which is good because I still have these sections on either side that should help keep the engine bay temperatures down. The air is going to come in here. It won't hit the front of the engine because the engine is only this wide. It'll go down the side of the engine, take some of the heat away from the headers, and then take it out of that rear vent or down underneath the car. It's not a bad thing because I'm not creating any sort of lift or drag. I'm just accepting the lift or drag that was already there and it'll keep my engine bay temperatures down. So we've got our template here. We're going to cut all of these little pieces of masking tape and then we have our templates to go off of. So I'll pull this back out. We'll use our new material and I'll come back with that and you'll see what that is in just a second. Here is the next step. This is made out of Coroplast, which is the same thing that I use all over this car. It is my dash, it is my cowl cover, it is this little section back here at the rear of the engine bay that was originally plastic, but now it is just Coroplast to keep all the ugly stuff covered up. It is my flat bottom, it is my battery box. I've covered a lot of different stuff with Coroplast because it is light, it is cheap, and it is strong enough for the jobs I need it to do. And it also melts at 325 degrees and nothing on your car should be at that temperature except for your brake system and your exhaust system. Other than that, it should be well under 300 degrees. So we'll be well clear of the melting temperature of this material. It's very light, it's very rigid. It will do a perfect job for what we need it for. So I've got it held together with these tack screws. So it's just a hex head with a coarse thread screw. I just followed the same shape. It needs a little bit of cleaning. I mean, I've got like some marks on here, but I need to take off with some acetone. And then all of these edges here are going to get sealed up just to make it as efficient as possible. But all the air is going to come through the radiator, hit this, and it's going to gently curve it up and direct it out. As the air comes in here, once it establishes the path of up and out of the hood vent, that is what's going to help make room for more air and it's going to just create a cycle once it establishes that path so it'll take it a little bit of time but once it gets going in that direction we should have a nice clean flow out of the hood vent which is going to reduce lift reduce drag and increase cooling all for a little bit of time working with this material this took me less than an hour if i was working with aluminum or carbon fiber this would have taken me five or ten times as long to get it cut to get everything perfect i can easily just take an exacto knife or some scissors and clean this up it's really really easy to work with it's super light and it is a great material for something simple like this where i just need flat geometric shapes one thing to keep in mind is as the air is coming through the radiator before it turns and makes its way out of the vent it's going to apply some force backwards and push the coroplast towards the crank pulley if it touches the crank pulley it will destroy it so i've got this little aluminum bar here that's bolted to the engine and that is there so that no matter what no matter how much air is coming through here it's not going to contact the crank pulley and it's going to keep our duct in one piece which is what we want so now I'm going to test fit it, put it in there with the fan, and we'll see how everything fits. And then we can test to make sure it works by turning on the fan, and we'll see how much air comes out with the duct versus how much air comes out without the duct. It's not an exact replication of the car at speed. That's what a wind tunnel is for, but I don't have access to one. But, and once we've got everything where we like it, we can take it out on a test drive, just make sure it works well before we take it to Road Atlanta and really put it through its paces. So here we have our finished product. It fits in there really nicely, taking up as much room as I possibly can while still leaving room for things like the lower radiator hose and our swirl pot right here. But it tucks in just as far as we possibly can get it. It's got this rubber lining here, but it's gonna help seal it up against the bottom of the hood and get as much air out of the hood as I possibly can. It's not perfect. There's just a lot of things in the way and I would love for it to be full width, but this is going to be much better than just having the hood vent by itself. I'm super excited. I think it looks really, really good. It's a nice complement to the engine bay. Covers up a little bit of a carbon fiber, but that's okay. I really think it adds to the racy look of it. Really the only hindrance is it covers up where I fill the oil at, but because this isn't really held down by anything, I can just easily slide it out of the way and get to this. I'm going to have some sort of mechanism to hold it down. I haven't quite decided on what I want to use, 
What I'll probably do is attach it right here. So I'll maybe use a stud off of this radiator fan mount. I'm not quite sure what my final solution will be, but I'll update you guys when I get the road to Atlanta. And here's another angle of it. You can see the fan down there on the radiator. It's not the most direct path out in the world because of course our engine is still on a stock location, but we'll be able to make another one of these in the future when we have the ability to move the engine back and wean the radiator forward. But considering the space we had, it's the best that I could possibly do. But I still think it's going to be a huge improvement over what we had before with just the hood duct by itself. Earlier I was able to test it with the duct and without the duct by turning on my radiator fan and seeing how much air came out of the vent. It was night and day how much air actually made it out of the hood. From a logic standpoint that is to be expected if it, the only place it can go is through the duct it's going to come out but it's nice to see that it works in practice just as well as it does in theory but I'm really really happy with it. It looks awesome. It fits perfectly. It's going to add almost no weight to the front of the car but it's going to add a lot of functionality to the front of a car so definitely worth it. I'm not sure if you can tell on camera but I did seal up all of the sides so all the edges and all the cuts I had to make have been sealed up to get as much air out and make it as efficient as I possibly can. Of course like always if you have any questions drop them in the comments below hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next week.